My name is David Worthington. My name is Mandy Briggs and I'm the Education Officer at the New York. David Weeks, retired Methodist Minister. My name is Lucy Connors and I'm the Community Engagement Officer at the New Road. Wesley's Chapel has been around for over 200 years, providing a safe haven and uniting Christians all over the globe. Over the past 200 years, John Wesley's Chapel has stood firm. But now, a new chapter has arisen. A three-storey complex that will not only house a new education facility for those new modern-day Christians, but will also give a new access point for disabled people. Over the next few years, we'll be documenting the process and development of the new room project. Uh, we'll be filming the reconstruction, interviewing the members of the community and editing all together to create a final piece and a memory that will last forever. The thing that sticks out most is the call to serve. That we are called not just to be saved, but we are called to serve. And this place was above all places a place where Wesley served his community <coughs> in all sorts of ways. And so as I put my spade into the ground here, I hope the new building will equally be somewhere that will serve this place and the people who come here. Um, we are building a new visitor centre for John Wesley Chapel. It's going to take uh, approximately 60 weeks to construct. Uh, it's a challenging problem that we've got a very limited, um, very restricted uh, access to come to site. The works are sort of going to encompass having to do some piling work with the steel frame construction with uh, concrete floors on, on, on two levels. And the roof work is a combination of glass um, coping, glass kind of um, uh, roof in the very main areas with kind of zinc and uh, flat roof. The Horsefair project is a new three-storey building which is going to be located within the current Horsefair courtyard. 
There'll be three floors. The first floor, sorry, I beg your pardon, the ground floor will be uh, a cafe and uh, an expanded shop. Uh, on the first floor, we'll have our library and archives, and people will be able to access those. Uh, we'll also have improved toilet facilities. And then on the top floor, the second floor, will be our education suite. Uh, where we'll be able to welcome groups and uh, school parties and others who want to come and learn more about the Wesleys and their work that began in Bristol. Uh, other benefits include uh, access to an expanded museum and better facilities for disabled people. Uh, made up ground, it had various houses and all that. And because they were demolished and the ground is kind of made up, we need to go then to an undisturbed ground, which would be between 8 meters and 11 meters. We drill a, a 450 diameter uh, pile into the ground, fill it up with concrete, and then sticking up would be various reinforced bars. And those bars will be linking with concrete beams coming across, and that will form part of the uh, the, uh, the slab of the building. about telling the story of John Wesley and the new room and how Methodism developed. So my job is to work with schools and colleges and groups uh, to encourage them to visit the new room, uh, to actually go out to schools and colleges and groups as well, uh, to take assemblies, to take lessons and um, yeah, to, to encourage people to engage with the story, um, but not just in a sort of looking back way, but also think about how the story is, is relevant for today. Um, so we do general tours of the new room, and we've also got another property called Charles Wesley's House, um, where um, children can do different workshops. Um, when a school group visits the new room, they can have a tour, um, they can stand up in the pulpit, maybe dress up in, in a cassock, see what it feels like to preach. Um, we, we, we do quizzes and questions and answers. Um, we've also got a very specific strand of education which looks at slavery and abolition. Um, so uh, John Wesley preached against slavery from the pulpit and there was a, a riot in the chapel and he did so because the merchants sent men to disrupt the service. So we think about that with children and we, um, we have workshops that explore the themes of slavery, slavery and abolition as well. Okay, so the last six you've been out with, we finished the piling we started kind of doing the, the basis for the for the columns. So the columns and the structure still is not our features where you can see. And kind of that defines the level. So you have the first floor and the second floor and the roof. So that's in. And since then we've actually done the metal decking and got the concrete on the first and second floor. What should what should be happening tomorrow is we're gonna be pouring the ground floor concrete. And then that we kind of establish the, uh, the, the building footprint. So the main kind of thing was the the confine or the tightness of the other side and our point of entry which is via the uh, the horse fair.
we had a, a fixed dimension of 2.7 so we had to kind of make sure that everything that came onto side was less than 2.7 if it wasn't it couldn't get onto side so that merited having to notify having to tell all our subcontractors all our suppliers that whatever they were delivered on site, whatever transport they were bringing to site had to be less than 2.7. So having established that, we just kind of got on with it. We, there were various instances where our structure steel was very, very close, or, I mean, millimeters from the existing building. We, various alterations were done on site. Uh, areas were kind of, of the, building was kind of uh, trimmed to get our stealing. So we, we have that kind of detailing issue where we had to deal with on, on sign. So problems or challenges kind of uh, arise and you just have to pretty clearly just get on with it. Also the access to the site was the main issue and also kind of working adjacent to existing property has been a kind of a challenge where you cannot seek permission to put up scaffolding on, on various roofs. That was that was done and, and that's in progress now. So. So it's April 2017 and uh, the project has been going since January 2016. Uh, it's been a, a long project but it's been really exciting to see uh, the team from Beer Construction uh, start really from scratch and to see the new visitor centre grow and be created in front of our eyes. Um, it's been a long project and I guess there's been a, a, you know, a few questions and challenges along the way. But right now, as we speak, we're just a few weeks off of completion. It's really exciting. And I think as a staff team, we're just itching to get into the new building and to start using the new facilities. What I would say the final stages of the project in that we've got power, we've got gas, we've got water. And uh, we are the finishing, so the timber floor is going down with carpet tiles in the various offices and just in the next few weeks or so, kind of finish the decoration, i.e. touching up walls, where the walls have been marked due to various, um, uh, various subsequent works. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of stage where kind of just finishing, commissioning the M&E, and uh, in the next week or so, kind of, we will be out of sight.
steep, it's, it's almost the end of the project as we do this recording. All I can say is, wow! Uh, the trustees had a vision and to see it more than come to fruition is absolutely amazing. I just hope you can appreciate the wonder of this horse fair project as we produced it and delivered it. Uh, it is a jewel in the crown of Bristol and Methodism internationally. Awesome.